God is good all the time. For some reason, every Sunday we had rain and muggy day, but today is a beautiful day. God prepared all this for us to have outdoor service. It is wonderful to have you. It is wonderful to have you uh, at home. So please arise and let us greet one another by saying, Good morning. I'm glad you're here. You may be seated. <laughs> Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Um, month of August, at 1 p.m., we gathered together to take care of our church buildings. Uh, today, I hope that we could, you know, put a lines on the parking lot. And also, there are many other odd jobs in, inside of the building. So, if you are available, if you're able, please come to church at 1 p.m. We'll provide a pizza lunch for today. So, we'll have meal together and work together. Uh, Korea congregation, we've been doing a Bible writing project so we could put together as a altar Bible and we dedicate next year. Uh, well, we have plenty papers uh, left. So I'm, I'm planning for all of us to do you know Bible writing for in English. So I will gather you know some I will recruit some youth members and uh, children's group also uh, KM members who are who wants to write uh, Bible in English we are going to have uh, Bible writing project in soon so please join that ministry too and next Sunday at 11 a.m. nomination committee will gather together to prepare our church conference so if you are a member of nomination committee please remember 11 o'clock at conference room next week do we have any other announcement let us all stand let us join our opening hymn spirit of the living god music is in the bulletin continue to call to worship as we gather to sing and praise we give thanks to God as we prepare to discern and understand we give thanks to God as we open ourselves to wisdom and truth we give thanks to God let us sing songs of Thanksgiving and joy you may be seated Let us sing together hymnal page number 362, Nothing But the Blood. 
Let us sing together, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we gather to affirm that you are good, that you are the great provider, that you have faithfully given us everything that we need. We thank you for giving us Jesus, the bread of life. As we cannot live without food and drink, let us realize ever more deeply our need for him. Give us wisdom to help our children, our young ones, to understand that they need Jesus, the bread of life even as they grow in an increasingly secular and spiritually malnourishing culture. We are weak, but what we cannot do, you can. So please work in their lives and in our lives as well to draw us to you, the source of our meaning and life. Grant your power and wisdom to Pastor Chung and our church leadership. May they always be guided by your spirit and your word. Bless our new pastors and their families as they have begun their service in a challenging time. May we welcome them with your love. Be with those who are ill and with those who are mourning for them and caring for them. Hear them as they turn to you in prayer. Grant them your peace in the midst of pain and grant them a greater and clearer hope in your eternal kingdom. Lord, the life you have given us is precious. You have taught us this. Even now in Haiti, rescuers frantically dig through the rubble in the aftermath of another earthquake, trying to save precious lives. We pray that they succeed in saving many. Bless our worship today. May your name be honored in it. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.
reading John 6, 51 through 58. Is this one? Okay. Yes, okay. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. The word of the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be God. There's nothing like a good meal. When, when you are really hungry, it is really good. It's especially good. When I was in seminary, some of my classmates and I, we used to go camping. So we, we didn't have, you know, a lot. So we just go out there, uh, grab whatever, you know, from our place and make a meal there. And food we ate there were not fancy or especially well prepared. Bunch of guys trying to do uh, cooking. So sometimes the hamburgers and hot dogs were, you know, too well done <laughs> or really undercooked. And macaroni and cheese were just runny and beans are too cold. Then the ramen I brought did miracle there. But it, it tastes like the best food we had ever eaten because we had been so busy and really hungry that week. The other thing about good meal is that it settles you down. I don't know about you, but you know, when I get hungry, I get nervous. I, I just tend to get jittery and jumpy, you know. But a good meal settles me, me down. I'm more at peace and relaxed after a good meal. And of course, a good meal gives me strength. Hunger can make you weak. But a good meal, not one full of empty calories, but a meal that is good for you can give you strength. That is why people say that the breakfast is so important. It gives you energy to get the day started right. Speaking of good meals, remember that last week Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Now, some of, some of the people who heard Jesus say this thought he was crazy. And can you blame them? If someone came in here talking like we would think them crazy. I am the bread from heaven. You must eat my body and drink my blood to be fed. It sounds like a ranting of someone having a psychotic you know, episode. Of course, when we hear Jesus talking like this, we immediately think of the Last Supper. We think of the Holy Communion and the bread and wine that represent Jesus giving His life for us. But 
that's us. And that is right. But Jesus had not had the Last Supper yet in the Bible. And when he said these things, he didn't teach them, you know, his body and blood as a bread and wine on that table. We cannot simply write this up as an allusion to communion. Jesus is saying something here and that has meaning apart from that reference. Jesus is saying, I am the main course. You know the main course of the meal is that part uh, that fills us up and nourish us the most. So main dish, that is most important meal. Main course is the steak and potatoes, or chicken and rice, or pasta and meatball. That's the main course. Soup and salad of the appetizers are great, and the dessert afterward would be really great. But the main course makes and breaks the meal. You cannot, you cannot introduce or recommend a place where they serve great soup, but main dish is not so good. You don't recommend that place. Main dish is important. Jesus is saying he is the meat and potato for our souls. But Jesus is soul food here. What came before was good. The law and prophet provided some nourishment. That bread Moses served as appetizer was fine. It was prepared by God after all. But, <clears throat> Jesus is what really feeds us and gives us the life. Jesus is the main course. He sometimes, we sometimes lose sight of that fact. There's so much to feed on in the church. There are Bible studies and fellowship and activities and committee meetings and all these things are good, but they are just soup and salad. They are appetizers and dessert. Jesus is the main course. It is He who gives us eternal life. No one else. By feeding on Him and taking Him into our hearts and lives, we receive life. You can feed on appetizers and not die, but you will always be malnourished. So we need to remember that Jesus is the main course. I don't know if it is true, but according to legend, there was a king who loved his wife. And she died in childbirth. Since he was a king, he ordered a great memorial and big, huge, beautiful building be built for his wife. Thousands of workers toiled for 22 years. The king dedicated himself to making sure task was done well. He was there every single day to check on everybody. One day, near the end of the construction, a box was found among the construction level. The workers put that box here and there. It was in the way. They were about to discard this box. When it was discovered that it was the coffin of his wife. He had become so obsessed with the building of the memorial that he forgot it was meant to be memorial for his wife and final resting place for her body. According to the legend, the memorial is Taj Mahal. We too need to be careful that in the business of our church life we don't forget that is a reason for it all. 
for example, today we, we set this up to have outdoor worship service. We set this up, tent, and this podium, this sound system, the video, and all the chairs on the lawn. We're busy setting this up. But we don't need to, uh, we, we need to remember why we are all doing this. We don't need to forget. We don't, we don't forget the reason for all of this. Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. You know, bread was main staple of people's diet back then. People received most of their nourishment from bread. But to be nourished by bread, you have to eat it. You have to take it into yourself. A person next to you have a bread doesn't make you be filled. You have to take it into yourself. That is why it is with Jesus. We have to take him in. We have to accept him and ask him, ask him into our heart. We have to let him be part of ourselves. Too often people try to keep him at arm's length. For them, Jesus is someone or something outside of them. So when something happens, we go to Jesus and we ask him to help us. But a lot of times, we just keep a distance like that. But we have to let him in, then he can nourish you. And he can give life to your heart and your soul. Jesus is the main course. And this main course involves a sacrifice. Jesus said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Now if Jesus had just wanted to talk about accepting him as a spiritual nourishment, he could have just talked about Bread. But he also talks about blood. He's obviously talking about his death on the cross. Through his death, Jesus feed us. His death defeated sin. And because of sin is defeated, we have forgiveness and eternal life. For that to happen, a sacrifice has to be made. You know, we modern people are out of touch with what goes into preparing our food. We forget that the fried chicken on our table was once a live animal and it had to be killed to make our dinner possible. We go to market and we buy, you know, prepared packages. but. We have to know the whole process, how that ingredient come to our table. I remember reading an old church cookbook from our, uh, from my uh, former charger. I thought, wow, here's a secret family recipe for southern fried chicken. I started reading the recipe. As you know, I don't, you know, really eat chicken or birds. But, you know, I read <laughs> those cookbooks uh, as an information. And one part, well, really hit me. The first line, it said, the day before, pick out chicken. <laughs> it's, a, it's an old book. I can see in my mind a woman in an afternoon looking out the back door on a bunch of live chickens and picking one out to kill and cook. There was also a recipe for venison stew. Steve, are you ready for this? Yeah. The first step in this recipe, in this direction was kill a deer. <laughs> This main course required 
sacrifice too. Jesus' blood had to be shed. He had to die so that we could be fed. Eternal life is a free gift for us, but it cost Jesus his life. Jesus is the main course. Are you hungry? I'm talking about you know, the pinkers today. Are you hungry? Do you find that you grow weak spiritually? Do you feel jittery and nervous because your soul's blood sugar is low? Maybe you need a good meal. Jesus is the only soul food that can give eternal life. Nothing else. Other things may fill the emptiness for a little while, but they are just empty spiritual calories. If you want to be truly filled and never hunger again, you have to feed on Jesus. You have to dine on Him. Allow His presence to fill your emptiness. Keep Him at the center of your life. Jesus is the bread of life. He died to feed us and gives us eternal life. If you have never asked Jesus into your heart, then do it today. And if you have already asked Him into your heart, then feed on Him in prayer, in Bible study, and in service. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. The one who is this bread will live forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, pour your Holy Spirit upon us that we may receive your wisdom and discern your guiding truth. Open our hearts and minds to love your teachings. Transform our lives to walk in your ways that we may live our gratitude in all that we do every hour of the day. Be here with us. And remind us, nothing else in this world give us forgiveness. Nothing else in this world grant us eternal life. Nothing else in this world give us salvation. Only your Son, Jesus Christ, bread of life, can. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us bring forth our offering. Let us all stand. Time in this life is limited and our days are numbered. Yet you have remind us, reminded us that if we are wise and use the time well, you have it, we have eternity waiting for all of us. That is beyond our imagination. Help us to focus on what we have and what we can share and how the gifts we offer this day can bless others until we are joined with them. And your children give you their thanks and gratitude for their the rest of eternity. Bless each and every one of us so we may be broken and shared as your son Jesus did. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
let us join our closing hymn, page number 593, Here I Am, Here I am Lord. It's on the back of the book. Jesus is the bread of life. He is the main course. Only He can give us forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Nothing else. Through this week, let us take Him into our lives. Let us take Him in our daily life, so we can nourish our body and our soul every single day. Be with Jesus and walk with Jesus. Go forth in peace in the name of Jesus Christ and of the Father and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.